Hello everyone, it's Stephen Clark and friends. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, no matter where you are on this fun-filled planet. Having a look at the news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Well, let's kick off this news. China continues to threaten Australia. Ooh. And the Australians aren't happy. Thais agree with the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. How superpowers are helping with the CCP virus outbreak. China sends medical equipment to Thailand. Good job. China and South Korea to be removed from the Thai list of COVID hotspots. And the ever popular Apple AirPods to be made in Vietnam. China has continuously been threatening Australia. Leader of the Caters Party Australia, until Australia can learn to cut China out of the equation, in most respects, we will always have a weak bargaining point. This comes as an ongoing committee into the need for diversification in Australia's trade relationships. And Australia is not the only country the Chinese Communist Party has been threatening with tariffs and so forth. China has been threatening a lot of countries worldwide and they're all looking into their dealings with China now and wondering is it all worthwhile. More than a third of Australia's trade dollars is linked to China. Highlighting how we have put too many eggs in the one basket. And that is why they have the upper hand at the moment. China has given the nation's barley producers 10 days before potentially imposing close to an 80% tax on its barley imports. This comes as an ongoing committee into the need for diversification in Australia's trade relationships is preparing to call on the Chinese ambassador to Australia to give an explanation. Leader of the Caters Australia Party described the current jostling between Australia and the Chinese government a game of brinkmanship. China is a country which continuously uses this sort of bullying, coercive, threatening strategy over and over again to many countries, not only Australia. And many Australians, it seems just a harmful relationship. Advance Australia director Liz Storer is saying Australia has become increasingly reliant on a country who's shown us that they are in fact our enemy. So tell us in the comments below, do you think it is worth trading with and the consequences of trading with China? There was life before China and there'll be life after China. A huge minority of people agreed that the restrictions imposed to limit the spread of the coronavirus should be relaxed now that the situation has been improved according to the results of opinions surveyed by the National Institute of Development Administration or NADI poll. The poll carried out on May the 4th and 7th on 1,259 people aged between 18 and above throughout the country to gauge their opinion about measures which have been imposed by the government including the lockdown of the country. 34.39% said they strongly agreed with the idea as the number of infections had dropped. People had cooperated with the health guidelines issued by the government and some businesses had been allowed to reopen. A further 49.56% were in the more moderate agreement, saying that the relaxation of the restrictions would enable people to return to normal life and resume work. On the other side, 9.93% said they did not agree, saying that if the relaxations happened too quickly, there would be a second wave of the pandemic, while 6.4% strongly opposed relaxing the restrictions. The rest had no comment and not interested. If a second wave of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic breaks out, all of these restrictions would have been for nothing and would have to start again. How superpowers are helping with the CCP virus outbreak. An old saying, two heads are better than one. So two superpowers must be better than one when it comes to combating the deadliest virus in modern history. Unfortunately though, tens of the most technologically and financially powerful nations on earth joining hands against and seeing eye to eye on the CCP virus outbreak are low. Despite the enormity of the global crisis, China and the United States are blaming each other for the pandemic. Washington has dragged Russia into the conflict. 
charging that Moscow model of the smear campaign is being copied by Beijing. The World Health Organization is put into question by Washington as well. And when push comes to shove, the European Union, England will take sides completely. And which side that will be is a no-brainer. The diplomatic mess involving all the big countries will most likely get bigger. At a time when bioweapons is no longer the stuff of science fiction, theory, or lurching from a far-fetched to likely. The whole situation is unfolding like a barely filmed B-grade science fiction movie. A few days ago, the United States openly accused China of stepping up Russian-style campaign to shift blame from the pandemic by using fake social media accounts to propagate political secrecy about the virus. Early Western news reports said America was planning to punish China on various fronts for making the world suffer. Lee Gabriel, coordinator of the Global Engagement Center, told reporters she said the campaign was part of the effort to make the world see China as the global leader in the response rather than the source of the pandemic. All theories have one thing in common, a notion that the villain is playing the victim. With the World Health Organization and China as well as some viral conspiracy theories would ensure that the greater US leadership will never be fully trusted. China may be better positioned to take a leading role, but just barely. Would it be nice if the countries involved would look around the world and see the damage that is done and sort of think to themselves, let's join together and fight this virus instead of jockeying for a position in the media circus going on at the moment? The thing about this media war is everybody thinks their side is the good guys. So what do you think? Leave a comment on the comment section below if you like. China sends medical masks and equipment worth over 30 million baht to help Thailand. Today at the Don Myung Airport, General Chan Chan Chanmagal, the Deputy Minister of Defence, represented the Thai government in receiving medical equipment and supplies from Mr. Yang Xing, the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, to aid the people of Thailand during the COVID-19 outbreak. The shipment had values of 6 million yen or 30 million baht and will be used for the treatment of infected patients in the future as well as to prevent the operation safety of medical personnel in Thailand. 6 non-evasive ventilators 10 electrodiagram machines 30 intravenous infusion control devices 100 sets of infrared temperature monitors 6,000 sets of PCR-19 kits 100 single-use medical masks 15,000 medical masks 10,500 pairs of protective goggles 7,000 medical protective suits 120 biochemical and nuclear hand protective gloves General Chai Chang thanked the Chinese ambassador saying it wasn't the first time that the Chinese government had supported Thailand with tools and equipment. We also respect the People's Republic of China as they have contained the virus easily and introduced incredibly effective matters to deter the pandemic. After completing the delivery ceremony, the Chinese military aircraft immediately returned to China. In parting words, the ambassador said, Thailand and China are geographically not far away and both countries continue to share suffering and happiness. Mr Yang Xing said that after the epidemic came to Thailand, Chinese brothers and sisters were concerned, which the government and private sector, including Chinese people who lived in Thailand, gave help to the Thai side today. Supplies from China are another example of the friendship between the two countries and the two countries' armies. Epidemic without borders. Plague is a human enemy. Unity is the most important weapon, which the government and the Chinese army will provide assistance according to our ability. We are confident that with our cooperation we will eliminate the epidemic with our efforts to overcome and confident that all ties will win Thailand's fight. Chinese people will not forget Thailand during the most difficult times. The Republic of China knows that time is also ready to deliver various devices to China in time of need. Wow that is one juicy speech. I wonder if it was scripted.
China and South Korea to be removed from the Thai list of Chinese coronavirus hotspots. Thailand's Health Minister and Deputy PM Anutin Chan Virakan has proposed that China and South Korea be removed from Thailand's list of countries at high risk from the Chinese coronavirus infection. After their daily case count dropped into a single digit, the move aimed at gradually restoring economic and social ties was provisionally approved by Prime Minister Priyat Chinachar at a meeting on foreign policy on Thursday. The Prime Minister and the committee agreed with Anutin Chan Virakan, the Health Minister, and his proposal. However, various steps must be taken carefully, especially those related to travelling abroad. If a country is removed from the list, we must manage access rather than allowing freedom of movement. The matter will be discussed further before any decision is made. Director General of the Department of Disease Control said it was right to reduce the Chinese coronavirus threat level of China and South Korea as the contamination had slowed there to just a few new cases per day. But removing China and South Korea from the list did not mean their nationalities would immediately be allowed a re-entry into Thailand since the kingdom was still under emergency degree. He added that other countries on the risk list were not discussed at the meeting since they are still deemed potential Chinese coronavirus hotspots. But then you really have to ask yourself, is China releasing all the virus information and do they have the virus under control? If not, Thailand's in for a second wave. So the health minister really wants to look into that. Over to Vietnam now. Apple will produce millions of its popular AirPod wireless headphones in Vietnam for the first time this quarter in a sign the company has accelerated its diversification of products out of China amid the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Some 3 million to 4 million units or around 30% of the total classic AirPod products this quarter will be made in Vietnam. The product's relocation does not yet include AirPods Pro, a high-end version with noise cancellation features that Apple introduced last October. The majority of the AirPods range, including AirPods and AirPods Pro, are still produced in China, despite some wearable electronic devices being hit with additional tariffs imposed by the Trump administration last year. Apple's other top sellers, iPhone and MacBook, have not yet been hit by tariffs and are still mainly assembled in China. In mid-January, when the US and China linked the first phase of a deal to ease a year-long trade conflict, Apple slowed efforts to shift products out of China, its biggest production base. But the global pandemic has served as an additional reminder for tech companies of the importance of diversification and manufacturing stability, not just low cost. But unfortunately, trade wars have flared up again between Washington and Beijing, as the Trump administration officials plan ways to strip the supply chain out of China as its punishment for the country's handling of the epidemic. Tokyo also said it will fund Japanese companies' production relocation plans to slash the country's reliance on China. I think production would not cease in China, but countries will find other sources besides China to make product and not rely on China as a long-term investment.